Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. While the eleven and their companions were talking about what they had heard, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me is in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their mind to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A woman and her overbearing husband went on holiday to Jerusalem. While they were there, sadly, the husband passed away. The Jewish undertaker told the wife, you can have him shipped home for 5,000, or you can bury him here in the Holy Land for 150 pounds. The woman thought about it and told him she was going to ship her husband home for the funeral. The undertaker asked, why would you spend 5,000 to ship your husband home when it would be wonderful to him to be buried here and it would only cost you 150 pounds? The woman replied, well, long ago a man died here, was buried here, but three days later he rose from the dead. I just can't take that chance. Well, I remember going on camping trips when I was a youngster, and one of my favorite activities on those trips was sitting around the campfire at night and listening to the ghost stories. And as I listened, I told myself over and over, there is no such thing as ghosts. But that did not keep some of the stories from scaring the daylights out of me, and I often found it hard in the evenings to go to sleep. Now, that might seem a, like a strange start to a sermon, but in, back in the Bible times, some people believed in ghosts and were afraid of them. And we've just heard an example in our gospel this morning. It begins after two men had traveled on a long road to a town called Emmaus, and they talked about Jesus' death and all that had happened previously. As they walked, they were joined by a man. They did not realize at first, but it was Jesus. After Jesus revealed himself to them, they went straight back to Jerusalem and told the rest of the disciples. As they told the disciples they had seen Jesus, he suddenly appeared among them, and he simply said to them, Peace be with you. Knowing he had died, they thought they were seeing a ghost, and the Bible says that they were terrified and filled with fear. But Jesus asked them, why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts? 
Look at my hands. Look at my feet. You can see that it's really me. Touch me and make sure that I am no ghost, because ghosts do not have bodies. As you can see, I do. But still the disciples were not sure what to think. So Jesus asked for something to eat. As he ate some fish, they watched. And it showed them that he was no ghost, because as we know, ghosts do not eat food. And suddenly, there is Jesus among them, and he gives them the conventional greeting, peace be with you. And indeed, as we see and hear in other instances in the Gospels, the presence of Jesus does bring peace and love and joy. And it is something for us to take note of. The disciples' first reaction, however, is one of fear and alarm, as any normal person of the day would have reasoned. Jesus is dead, and so this must be a ghost. But Jesus reassures them. He points to the hardness of his body. He invites them to touch his hand and his feet. In one sense, this is not the Jesus who died on the cross. He can appear through closed doors and widely scattered areas, but is still fully the same person they had always known. Jesus' Jesus's body wasn't a figment of their imagination or the appearance of a ghost as the disciples touched him and they ate together. His body wasn't a restored human body like Lazarus, Jesus' body was immortal. Now their feelings turn to inexpressible joy as they look on him with a mixture of happiness and wonder. He pushes a bit further and he asks for some food to eat. As we know, like I said, ghosts don't eat. Jesus is truly risen. He is still fully in our world and a major part of it, although in a very different way from the Good Friday Jesus. The disciples realized Jesus had come back to life and they spent the next month or so with him. After Jesus returned to heaven, those same disciples went all over the world talking about his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection. They never stopped talking about what had happened. You and I have been called to tell others about Jesus, just like those disciples. We must be a witness for Jesus too. The uncomfortable truth about Easter isn't that it didn't happen, but it did happen. It's an uncomfortable truth for the medical world, for the scientists, a body cannot come back after three days. Scientists want to discount it because it cannot be repeated. That is why the resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth calls shockwaves that have rattled the world then and is still doing it now. Back in the 1950s, children in school asked the question whether man would ever go in space or make it to the moon. Then in July 20, 1969, as we know, e. Neil Armstrong walked on the surface of the moon. We do not ask that question any longer because the proof stops the questions. And finally, Jesus demonstrated that there is life after death and proved it by his resurrection. That was witnessed by his followers. We have the evidence written in the scriptures. We too are his witnesses and we must continue to talk about Jesus and how he changed and is still changing the world. Amen.
So let us come together as we say our creed, as we witness, as we say what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. In joy and hope, let us pray to the Father that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news of Easter. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer that by his power, war may cease in the Ukraine and Russia conflict, the Gaza and Israel troubles, and that there is no escalation with Iran joining in, and the many conflicts in Africa. We send our thoughts out to all those suffering famine and hardship especially in Gaza. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and dying, to comfort the families and friends of those affected by the murders in Australia. We ask your comfort for the family of Peace of Johnson, recently departed. We wish you to comfort and strengthen all in these times of trouble. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that according to his promises, all who have died in the faith of the resurrection may be raised on the last day. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that, as his death has recalled us to life, so his continual presence in us may raise us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
So let us all come together now as we join in our peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace with you all. Peace with everybody. Peace at the back. Peace in the middle. Peace at the front. Peace with you, James. Peace with you. And peace to everybody at home who may be watching online. May you all have a peaceful and restful week. So we stand for our hymn at the offertory, which is number 247, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your loving care, you spread before us the table of life and give us the cup of salvation to drink. Keep us always in the fold of our Saviour and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father. And on this day of our redemption, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of eternal life. 
And so in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, with angels and archangels, and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the savior of the world. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory. We celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So let us all join together now in saying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We join together in saying, God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Do we have any notices, church wardens, please? You'll see on the back of your pew notices uh, the notice about um, this Saturday, the 20th, Tasty Teas, and they're going to be from 10 till 12. You'll see the details on the pew note. Uh, for those involved, there is a rehearsal for Open the Book on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming the 16th, at 4 o'clock in the vestry. Uh, Messy Church is uh, once again um, on the 27th, the last Saturday of the month, and that is from 4 till 5.30. So please encourage anybody to come along and have fun and frolics and uh, see a video and hear Bible stories. It's very enjoyable. And you'll see on some of these boards here the, the fruits of uh, what they do in Messy Church. They're uh, rather colourful. Um, on uh, the 30th, um, John Hawkes is giving a talk in the church rooms. Um, this is going to be at 7.30 and it will be cash on the door, please, and that's £7.50. And uh, his, his talks are always very interesting um, for what he did in the past when he was flying bombers. On the back uh, table, you will see there are a couple of copies of a letter from Bishop Hugh, um, all about um, the diocesan synod and synods and PCCs um, in general. Um, there's a much of a falling off in PCC numbers and synod members and he is trying to recruit as many people from all walks of life all over the diocese to come and join in so that thoughts of congregations uh, and communities can get back to the people who actually make the decisions so if you can have a look at those on the back before you go and the lovely news, we had our spring fair yesterday. Hard work, but much enjoyed. Thank you to all who came along, volunteered, and looked after the people who came. And just about the final um, uh, amount of money is £440. So we're really pleased and it's all hard work and thanks to everybody who came along. Thank you, volunteers. <laughs> and is anybody owning up to a birthday? Oh, yes. Oh, there yes. is one here. Yes. Yay. 
Not a good day over 79, does she? Isn't that what you talk? Oh, sorry, I got, got that wrong. <laughs> anyway, yes, I mean, volunteers. We would be in a sorry place, not just the Church of England, but lots of organisations. You take scouting, guiding, uh, the, you know, the, uh, what you call it, um, the Red Cross, everybody. They're all volunteers. I'm a volunteer. I'm also a volunteer with the police in Bodmin. Uh, I'm a volunteer for the air cadets, you know, and we offer such a great service and support. I mean, you know, sadly as it is, I get called in to debriefings in the station for some of the horrific things that, you know, our police officers have witnessed. But I'm there for them, you know, and like I said, it would be a real sad place. Well, half these places, you know, these uh, agencies or whatever you want to call them, they wouldn't function without volunteers. And I always, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, it's an aging population. Well, the human race is not dying out. We do have young ones coming on and we need to be encouraging them to, you know, become volunteers and help out. But yesterday was a great day shown, you know, by all the volunteers that came and helped and we were able to raise, you know, much needed money for this church. So, you know, good on you. That's enough of me. Let's hear, should we have our final hymn now? Which is number 431. We have a gospel to proclaim.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. risen God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. And God the Holy Spirit, whom the risen Lord breathed into his disciples, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. With the power that raised Jesus from the dead at work within you, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for James. Yeah.